Okay, in this video I'm going to teach how to use custom sounds within Hammer and also um, make a door that's trigger based instead of uh, like, like uh, pressure plate based instead of actually going up and pressing use on it. Um, so first off, we need to actually make the door. So let's go ahead and make that brush. Now if you hear something breathing at my dog, he's been freaking out. There's been a storm recently, so that's my doggy. And we're going to lift it up to the door frame. And lift it up. Oops. I just messed it up. Yes, we are good. And we are going to use the Minecraft door texture. This is my energy texture that I have. Door. There we go. Enter. Now we are going to move this up 128. We want to rotate it. Oops. Actually, we're not going to rotate it that way. We're going to rotate it this way. Transform. Okay, so we have our door. Voila. Let me extend this out. I'm actually using a, a part of the um, Adventure Craft map to do this. So we have our door, voila. So now this is actually just gonna be a funk brush. We're not gonna use funk door or rotating door or anything like that. This is just gonna be simply a hiding and revealing type door. So we're gonna name this door one open. Oh, actually, this is closed. And this is gonna be, we're gonna leave it on toggle because we're gonna make it go away and come back. And it is originally a solid file. Solid brush. I'm gonna start like that. And, all right, we are good. And we need to make a copy of this. Let's duplicate that right there. And we are going to rotate this 90 degrees and place it right there. All right, so we have that door, and we actually need to edit this. Control T. Oops, I didn't need to do that. Um, make this funk brush as well. Actually, we're just going to copy everything from the other one and cop paste it onto there. But we're going to name this one door open. Now we want this to also be toggleable. Um, it doesn't really matter. Actually, you can put never solid if you want to. But we got not solid, and this one's actually going to start disabled, which means that when the map loads, you won't see this door. You'll only th see this one. Apply that, and we are good. Okay. So now we need to make the actual pressure plate. So we're going to do this. 40 by 40 pressure plate. Oops. We need it to be small. We're going to have it be a, about two units tall. It's probably a decent size. And we need to do we use the wood texture. Let's use this basic wood texture. I know it's not the same texture as these guys. I mean, if, if you guys really want to, just use the same texture. Apply it there. We do have to rotate this. There we go. All right, so we have our pressure plate. Now we wanted to have it on both sides in case somebody's coming in or coming out. So we're gonna copy it and we're going to... Now you saw me copy it onto this surface. When I do that, it puts it at the same height as the other one. That way you don't have to bother like placing it in the right height. So I just pasted it onto the same surface and moved it over. Easy, so now we have these two, they line up properly. All right, so we have the pressure plates. Those are just going to stay there. We're not really going to bother with making them any triggers or anything or make them move. You, you can get fancy and make them be like a, a button or something and have it move and all, but that just becomes a hassle because you don't need to time the button correctly and everything. 
And in Minecraft, it's all just kind of instant when they walk onto the actual um, button. So now we need to make a brush area, an area where they're going to walk into. And we're going to have it be, it doesn't really matter what size it is, just as long as their feet are going to go in there, because it's when they walk on it, it'll open automatically. And we need this to be the trigger brush, just so it's not drawn when in-game. We don't want to see this brush when we load the game. And we need to make this a, an entity, so Control-T. And we're going to call this a trigger multiple. A lot of things are going to happen at this point. It's going to happen lots of times. So this is going to be called door one trigger. And it's going to start enable, so we don't have to unlock this door anytime in the map. Um, later on we're going to deal with how to do objectives, I guess you could say. Like TTT and enabling a TTT test or things like that. Anyway, so first we need to make it to where when the player touches this brush that it's going to make this door disappear. It's going to disable that door. And another, so we got that, that's done. So we're going to do another one. When the player touches it, it's also going to make this door appear, enable, it's going to be enabled, so we can see it. Now we also want sounds to happen. Before we do that, we just need to clean this up. We're going to make another one, and we're going to make this on start, on end touch. Door open is going to disable, I want that to go away. And on end touch, door closed, this one is going to enable. There we go. So they touch it, door disappears, that door appears, they will stop touching it, this door appears, that other door disappears. Alright, so we come to the sound portion. This is where we want to actually add sounds to my, uh, Gary's mod. Now there are several ways you can get the Minecraft sounds. You can either load up Minecraft, use a program named Audacity, and... Oops, where is my cursor? Why is my cursor disappearing? Hold on. Okay, I don't know why my cursor is disappearing. Anyway, use a program named Audacity. And Audacity, what it does, you can either... Well, you'll need this in any event. You can either run Minecraft, have it mute all the sounds, music, weather, hostile creatures, anything. We don't want to hear anything except for blocks. That way, when you open and close the door, you can just straight record it. Make sure you have stereo mixer selected. Record. And then you just play these sounds. Stop recording, and then you can kind of zoom in here. And if we only want to, oops, 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 oops. If we only want to grab one of these sounds, we would just use this tool. Select the sound, copy, new, paste. That way we have the door open sound, and we would export it as a WAV file. Now, Hammer only reads WAV files, so we need it to be WAV format. If you were to get it directly from the Minecraft directory, um, whatever version of Minecraft you have, I, I think they've it made new sounds recently. You would have to go into your, if this, this is Windows 7 by the way, but you would have to go into your Minecraft data, wherever you put um, save files or anything like that. You'll see your Minecraft files. So you'll see assets, then you'll see, I believe it is, I wanna say virtual, legacy, sounds and within here you'll find music notes portals random all this kind of stuff I don't quite remember where the where the door sound is but just look through here I'm sure you'll find it at some point in any event Minecraft sounds are all OGGs now hammer does not read OGG so what you can use you can also use audacity you can just um, drag and drop it onto audacity and then you can export it as a WAV file. Now, once you've exported it, you also want to put this into a directory that Hammer can find it. If you've already set up Hammer the proper way from my other video, um, little thing there, uh, you can also, it, it should already be reading the right directory. So once you get your WAV file, make sure to place it into, oops, my mouse is disappearing. It's really annoying. Can't even see my mouse. You want to put it into Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod Sound. So make sure that you have it in this directory. Um, any custom sounds that you're going to have. 
Um, we'll make a little Minecraft folder and you put sounds in it and it'll look just like this. Make sure they are WAV files. Um, uh, sometimes I've had problems with MP3 files, sometimes it works, but I've never had a problem with the with the WAV file before. Um, so once you have that, you'll have to re reload Hammer and then we will go ahead and add these things to it. Maybe it's Minecraft causing problems. It was Minecraft, that's why. Okay, that was awkward. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we need to add a sound entity. So I added entity, selected it with the selection tool, and we're going to change it to ambient generic. And with that, we are wanting to also I'm going to name this door one um, open sound. There we go. And the sound name, we're going to browse. Now, you might not see raw when you first open this. You might see it like this, game sounds. Set it to raw. That way you can see all the directories of which you have sounds. And if you press the letter M, for me it brings up my Minecraft sounds because it's the directory is the first letter with the letter N. And we want to find uh, the door open. Okay. Now this audible distance, this is how far away you want the sound to be heard. Um, anybody within this sphere um, on the level will be able to hear the door open. Now we're going to shrink it just for kicks and we'll name it 500. That way anybody within this 500 radius <clears throat> will hear the sound being played or will hear the door open. Um, oops. Now everything else you can pretty much leave alone. We don't really need to touch it. It's not a loop sound, so we want to make sure that that's ticked. It's not loop. By default, it is ticked. Now we have the door open sound. We need the door close sound. So we're going to change this to door close sound. And my file was named, I believe it was named door close. Yes. Okay. And there we have it. So we have the two entities there. Now we need to make the trigger play those so um, sounds whenever it's opening. So on start touch, when the player touches his brush, we want it to play the door open sound via play sound. There we go. And when the door leaves the brush, when they stop touching this brush, we want it to play the door close sound. Play. And there you have it. That should be a complete door. So let's go ahead and load up Hammer and see if this works. Um, we're going to what did I do? There we go. I'm going to shrink that back right down. There, now that's back to normal. Okay, so we are ready to run it. Let's go ahead and compile the map. All right, the map has loaded, and so let's go ahead and have a look see at what we got. There we go. Now as you can tell, the sound right there, very quiet, probably because I set that 500 radius of the sound, and probably fix that. Also, the sounds that placed it here and here, probably can't hear it that well because these walls are blocking out the sound. So maybe if we placed it right in front of the door, or on both sides of the door, it might be better. And I didn't think I would have affected that, but apparently it did. Anyway, now that we have a functioning door, you can kind of play around with the sounds. Um, it's always fun. I know how to make triggers, and I'm sure you can use that technique on many other things. Thanks for watching, and good luck on mapping, guys. Bye.